Wai Shen, who was fighting on a battlefield, realized that he had made a severe mistake. All of his teammates were dead and there was no way he could kill all those monsters alone. That was truly an S-level battlefield, but Wai Shen did not find it bad. He opened a message that came to his device. The message was from his girlfriend. She asked him to live happily as a promise he was supposed to fulfill for her. She also emphasized that by the time Wai Shen would get the message, she would no longer exist in that world. But Wai Shen apologized to her though she would not be able to receive it, and also asked her to forgive him if they met in another world because he would not be able to fulfill his promise. In this endless game, Wai Shen wanted to fight till his last breath just so as not to die with any regrets. He preferred it to be the last battle of his lifetime, but fate had favored him once again. He woke up in some sort of system that was analyzing his results in the endless game. The system mentioned that Wai Shen had died 100 times successfully there was an operating rule that every time a player succeeded in aiming the death, the player would gain an amount of dead aim points. After accumulating certain points, the player would have a chance to be reborn. After each time a player was reborn, he would be rewarded with different presents. The game required the player to try their best to head for their death and make themselves stronger to reach the top of living standard. Wai Shen was shocked to see the rebirth system. He could not comprehend what was going on. He thought he was in an illusion but it was not true. He was indeed reborn and teleported into a certain time in the past. Before teleporting, he had a question for the system. But before he could ask, he was teleported into the classroom of his past. So, when he shouted that he had a question, it was directed to his teacher. His teacher was a beautiful female. She asked what question Wai Shen had for her. Wai Shen was not innocent. He wanted to test all those things that he learned a few minutes ago from the system. He asked a perverted question about the breast size of his teacher which made his teacher mad. She punished Wai Shen and kicked him out of her class. As the rule of the rebirth system, Wai Shen got 10 dead aim points for aiming the death successfully. The date he was teleported to was the 13th of April. It was the date when a weird catastrophe occurred on Earth. People were sucked in by some holes. Some people were digitized, and those who were stuck in that hole had to fight different adventure games and explorations. Those who failed disappeared forever. Even their dead bodies were not to be saved, because games of that space commonly never stopped its circulation. It was endlessly eternal, so this phenomenon was called endless collapse. As Wai Shen was reborn, he decided to become the strongest and protect the people he loved. Seeing Wai Shen mumbling, his teacher threw a book at him. She yelled that she could see him mumbling. Wai Shen took that opportunity and aimed for death again. He approached his teacher and kissed her. His teacher was aroused for a certain period. But Wai Shen pushed her away when he obtained the dead aim points that he was aiming for. His teacher felt embarrassed and shouted at him for his behavior. Wai Shen then approached a blonde bulky looking guy. He provoked the guy by mentioning that people like him became problematic when the catastrophic event happened. Apparently, people sucked by that hole became zombies, and a whole nightmare act of the endless collapse started. So, it was better to kill them before they mutated. Wai Shen also noticed the mutation tattoo on that guy's neck. He was sure this guy would become a zombie so, he killed him right at that spot. His teacher became terrified and threatened to call the police. But Wai Shen cared less about that. Some students thought the reason behind his wild behavior was that he was cheated on by his girlfriend. Hearing them whispering, Wai Shen remembered that the current he was cheated on by his ex-girlfriend. Wai Shen asked Lu Zhu about his feelings about hanging out with his ex-girlfriend. Lu Zhu became angry and forbade Wai Shen from talking nonsense about Hone. Wai Shen laughed and asked whether she was not the girlfriend of the basketball club's vice captain, the president of the student association, and the handsome guy owning the internet shop in front of their school. Hone accused Wai Shen of slandering. Wai Shen then dared Hone to let Lu Zhu check her hotel rental history for that month. Lu Zhu became disgusted and pushed Hone away from him. Wai Shen then again gained 40 points dead aim points from the rebirth system. He understood that the more people felt hatred for him the more points he gained. Right then, Wai Shen noticed another person with a mutation tattoo behind Lu Zhu and Hone. He jumped towards them. They thought he was aiming to kill them but he killed the tattooed girl instead. While killing her, Wai Shen apologized to her because he had to kill her or more innocent people would have suffered from pain because of her. He remembered that there were three students who were mutated and started searching for the last one. At that very moment, a female police officer came and asked for the reason for the police call. Wai Shen's teacher summarized that Wai Shen had gone mad and killed two of her students. Wai Shen recognized the officer as Chen Jingxi. They became friends before Wai Shen was reborn. But Chen Jingxi did not recognize him and asked how he knew her name. Wai Shen ignored her question and exclaimed that it was fortunate she had not been killed yet. Chen Jingxi forbade Wai Shen from moving forward or else she would shoot him. 
but unfortunately, she had accidentally pulled the trigger already. Wai Shen was shot in the forehead by her. Chen Jing she was terrified but she justified her action by implying that if she did not shoot him he would have harmed more people. But the shocking part was the disappearance of Wai Shen's body. He regenerated successfully and received the present near-death rookie chest. The chest contained a one cubic meter space containable ring that did not allow storing living things, a Zurin Zehai which was in a level martial art book, and a sea level recovery life pill. Wai Shen was happy to receive those things. Chen Jing she demanded what was happening but Wai Shen tackled her and pulled her closer by the waist. Chen Jing she commanded Wai Shen to release her but she was interrupted by the message that started showing on the TV. A talking penguin introduced himself as Kaizu and told the people that he was the introducer of the Collapse Data game. The game was about to start in a few minutes. If one was a fan of fatality, dead bodies, violence, or murder, one would surely enjoy the next dead moment. The penguin informed them that in the first game, they could remove approximately 70% of the people standing there and encouraged them to try their best to survive. Wai Shen mumbled that everything was happening the same way as before. Chen Jingxi was noticing Wai Shen's movements. The last mutant was actually a girl that had the tattoo on her waist. That was why Wai Shen had missed her. The girl started transforming. Wai Shen advised everyone to run away from her but her boyfriend did not acknowledge Wai Shen's warnings. The girl then transformed and bit her boyfriend. Wai Shen took Chen Jingxi's gun and shot the girl in the forehead. But she did not die. He realized that with her current ability and strength, he would be unable to deal with her. He shouted at the remaining students that it was not any dream and advised them to run as fast as they could. Wai Shen commented that he would not die so easily this time and handed the gun back to Chen Jingxi. He then hugged Chen Jingxi and felt her body with his hands. According to him, it was just as soft as the time he last touched it. Chen Jingxi felt embarrassed and yelled at him. Then Wai Shen threw a book at the zombie girl and ran for the window. He provoked her to come after him. The zombie came after him with full force. Wai Shen then moved from the window and the zombie went flying out from the window. The zombie was killed and Wai Shen obtained 500 points. Chen Jingxi was confused by Wai Shen's behavior. She could not understand how he could be so level-headed in this situation. Right then, Wai Shen noticed that a guy was about to attack Chen Jingxi. He came running and punched the guy. Then he grabbed Chen Jingxi's hand and advised her not to be so absent-minded at a time like that. Both of them ran outside of the classroom hand in hand. Wai Shen told everyone to follow him. The system showed that it was a mission of survival. They had to survive for 72 hours. The difficulty level was D and the reward was 2000 X points. Everyone was following Wai Shen. Chen Jing she could not understand how such an incredible catastrophe like that could occur. She was confused about why she was relying so much on Wai Shen. The wall was collapsing and students got stuck under the wall. Wai Shen's teacher went to save a student who was buried under the wall. Wai Shen advised the teacher to leave the student because it was too late for him. But the teacher could not leave her student behind, she wanted to save them. Wai Shen knew it was a lost cause but still helped his teacher to pull out the student. They successfully pulled out the student, but the student transformed into a zombie and bit the teacher on the chest. The rebirth system told Wai Shen to save his teacher, and the reward would be 100 near-death points. Wai Shen knew that saving his teacher was a completely dumb way to die, and understood why the system had placed such a huge amount of points on the mission. But Wai Shen knew every success came with a cost, so he decided to save his teacher anyway. He gave the life recovery pill to his teacher, but he had to slow down the spread of the poison in her body so that the pill could detoxify the remaining poison. Then he sucked out the poison from the open wound of his teacher. Chen Jing she thought that Wai Shen was being perverted again, but Wai Shen corrected her saying that he was just saving his teacher by forcing out the poison from the wound. Chen Jing she showed worries and exclaimed that by doing so Wai Shen would also get infected. Wai Shen replied that the zombie virus could only spread through an open wound, and there would be no problem if he accidentally swallowed some but it would work if there was any open wound in his mouth. Chen Jingxi asked about Wai Shen's identity and the reason for his clear perception of zombie transformation. Wai Shen replied that he would talk about it later when they had a chance and advised that they had to find a safe shelter to survive. They all took shelter in a gymnasium. Everyone asked Wai Shen about his vast knowledge. They wanted to know the reason for the sudden appearance of zombies and the virtual lines of words flowing in front of their eyes. They were confused about the meaning of dungeon missions or the X points. Some thought they were playing a video game. A fatty emphasized that he had read many novels so far, and they just had to kill the monsters, complete the missions, to become Superman. Wai Shen advised him not to dream so much because their current situation could be similar to those novels he had read 
But it was not only a game. Each one of them had only one life, and they were no better than noodles, feeble chicken shits that had no power. So, it would be better for them to hide away to survive. By commenting such harsh words at them, Wai Shen gained 40 near-death points, which made his points a total of 203. When the points would reach 200, a player would have a chance to regenerate. Clearly, being offended, Lu Xu aimed for Wai Shen, but Wai Shen easily defeated him. Then he picked up the teacher and told Chen Jingxi that he had to enter the lounge to treat his teacher. Chen Jingxi obeyed Wai Shen subconsciously again. Lu Zhu tried to pursue Chen Jingxi by implying that Wai Shen might have hidden something in the lounge because his knowing so much about the situation was suspicious. Chen Jingxi pointed her gun at Lu Zhu and told him to stay put because she had decided to believe him even though the situation was something that made Wai Shen suspicious. Wai Shen's teacher was in the middle of transforming into a zombie but was not transformed completely yet. The book he got when he regenerated needed to be used now, but the book was something that could not be used in a common way. Basically, it was a training book for those who loved self-abuse. He opened the rope of his teacher that he tied around her previously so that she could not attack anyone. Wai Shen's teacher lunged at his half-naked self and started torturing him. Chen Jingxi and others heard quite a vulgar sound coming from the lounge. They were practically having vulgar thoughts about the situation inside the lounge. Inside the lounge, Wai Shen's teacher had bitten Wai Shen and sucked his blood. Because of immense pain, his immune blood vessel upgraded and his teacher gained some effects from the blood she consumed from him. Wai Shen had lost too much strength and wanted to rest, but his teacher was acting weird. The system notified him that the immune blood vessel could have some side effects. Because of the side effect, his teacher started going on heat and craved physical intimacy. To save his teacher, Wai Shen had no other choice but to cave into the desire of his teacher. After finally calming the intimacy rush of his teacher down, he mourned for the loss of his virginity. Outside, Lu Zhu was getting impatient. He started manipulating others by saying that Wai Shen had gone inside the lounge for an hour, and that detoxifying should not take this much time. Lu Zhu implied that Wai Shen might have run away using a secret door that no one knew about. He got a hold of an iron rod and demanded to burst inside the lounge. Right then, the entrance of the gymnasium burst open, and zombies poured in. A big zombie aimed for the girls and rushed at them. Chen Jingxi fired at the zombie, but it was no use. Chen Jingxi was terrified and could not move. At that very moment, a shirtless Wai Shen took his entry and saved Chen Jingxi from the zombie. Chen Jingxi was glad to see Wai Shen. Wai Shen apologized to her for his delay, but Chen Jingxi became pissed to see the scratch marks on Wai Shen's back. Wai Shen tried to defend himself but Chen Jingxi was not someone who could be fooled. She knew very well how Wai Shen got those scars. Everyone around them was running for their lives. The zombies were trying to bite them. They all were asking for help. Wai Shen took the gun of Chen Jingxi but it had no bullets. Wai Shen then grabbed Chen Jingxi and pulled out the reserved ammo from between her breasts. Chen Jingxi became red with embarrassment. Shen could not understand how Wai Shen knew so much about her habits. On the other side, a zombie had captured Hone and ripped her clothes off. Hone desperately asked for help from Lu Zhu, who was her current boyfriend. But Lu Zhu ran away from there to save himself. He practically left Hone there to be humiliated by the zombie. Hone was terrified and cried out loud for help. Then Wai Shen came and pointed the gun inside the zombie's mouth and pulled the trigger. The zombie was killed and Wai Shen upgraded to level 2. He understood that the more he leveled up, the more he would become stronger. So, he decided to aim for leveling up. Using the gun, Wai Shen wiped out those zombies. Everyone was astonished to see his agility. After wiping out all the zombies of that place, Wai Shen noticed a training book. He did not know low-level zombies also contained training books, but the book was about the shooting. The name of the book was Headshot One Shot. It only worked with shootable weapons. A shot on an enemy's head would cause huge damage but a shot on any other part would cause the common damage. Wai Shen knew that it was not a book that he needed, so he gave the book to Chen Jingxi. He instructed Chen Jingxi that she would be able to use the book right after pushing the confirm button. A mission showed up in front of Wai Shen. It was about saving his classmates. It showed that each student that would be alive after the dungeon mission would be equivalent to 30 near death points. Wai Shen was annoyed that he had yet again gotten stuck with another annoying mission. He informed those other people that he was going to collect some food and drinks for all. He also instructed them to look for something substantial to reinforce the door. Lu Zhu approached Wai Shen. Wai Shen asked Lu Zhu if he had any better ideas to offer. But Lu Zhu replied that he had no such things to share rather he had come to apologize. Lu Zhu did not realize he had such a strong person as his friend, so he wanted to apologize to Wai Shen for any past wrongdoings he had done to him. 
why Shen was impressed to see Lu Zhu's ability to go with the flow, which was why he decided to forgive Lu Zhu. He replied that they all were on the boundary of life and death so staying compatible was what they should do. He also instructed them not to disturb her because she was resting. Wai Shen was about to leave when Chen Jingxi stopped him. Chen Jingxi told Wai Shen that she would not let him venture into a dangerous zone alone because as a police officer, it was her duty to protect her residence. Wai Shen hugged her and asked if she was doing this because she fell in love with him. Wai Shen was teasing Chen Jingxi because he was reminded of the past. In the past, Chen Jingxi also stopped him from going into dangerous places alone in the same manner. Chen Jingxi got furious and threatened to kill Wai Shen, but Wai Shen overpowered her by implying that doing so would only bring forward her death at the hands of zombies. Feeling annoyed, Chen Jingxi mumbled that she hated him. Lu Zhu approached Hone and asked for forgiveness for leaving her alone. He approached to give her a hug, but Hone saw his true color. So, she slapped him and decided to break up with him. Outside of the gymnasium, zombies were lurking everywhere. Chen Jingxi clung to Wai Shen's side out of fear. She asked Wai Shen if he did not fear them at all. Wai Shen replied that the nightmare had only begun and that a lot more terrible things were waiting for them. But he promised Chen Jingxi that he would protect her this time no matter what. Zombies were taking food in a queue at the cafeteria. Wai Shen and Chen Jingxi were sneaking around quietly. They tried their best not to be found out by the zombies. Wai Shen was being a pervert as always and grabbed Chen Jingxi's butt. Chen Jingxi yelped. The zombies on the line almost discovered them had they not been hidden under the table. Cheng Jingxi whisper shouted at Wai Shen. Wai Shen tried to excuse his action by implying that he was just training her adaptability and inferred that she was unskilled. Chen Jingxi pointed her gun at Wai Shen's chin and commented that he and Pikachu's younger brother looked the same because they both always want to be beaten. They reached the school's supermarket, successfully avoiding the zombies. The zombies were not lingering around the supermarket at all. Chen Jingxi was surprised to see that a school had a supermarket inside it. The supermarket belonged to the school's canteen. They had to leave right after collecting all the necessary goods. Chen Jingxi found a delicious cake, but Wai Shen took it away from her. He instructed that unnecessary and short-lasting stuff should not be collected. He then told her to collect more water bottles and cookies. Chen Jingxi tried to take the cake from Wai Shen's hands, but he held it high in the air. All those jumping around in an attempt to obtain the cake made Wai Shen's hand tremble, and the cake fell over Chen Jingxi's body. Taking in the opportunity, Wai Shen took a strawberry that was stuck around Chen Jingxi's chest and attempted to eat it. Seeing this, Chen Jingxi became angry and slapped Wai Shen. Wai Shen had forgotten that Chen Jingxi was gluttony. She would stay nice until scrumptious food arrived. In his past life, Chen Jingxi was the girlfriend that told Wai Shen to live happily as a promise, which he did not keep. Chen Jingxi was mumbling angrily when she smelled something nice. It was quite strange that something with a great smell was coming out of the kitchen of the canteen. The kitchen was behind the supermarket. Chen Jingxi took out her gun and slowly approached the kitchen. She slowly turned the doorknob and examined the room for zombies. No zombies were there. There was something cooking in the pot. The smell was eerily similar to that of meat, but still, it was unknown. Chen Jingxi never smelled any meat like that before. Chen Jingxi went to open the lid of the pot when Wai Shen came and shouted at her not to open it. But Wai Shen was too late. Chen Jingxi had already opened the lid. Chen Jingxi was shocked to see the human meat cooking on the pot and fell to the ground. The butcher zombie of the canteen came and saw Chen Jingxi and Wai Shen. He was thirsty for human flesh so, seeing Wai Shen and Chen Jingxi drove the zombie crazy. He swung his weapon at Chen Jingxi, but Wai Shen was quick on his feet. He jumped forward and saved Chen Jingxi. But in that process, his leg got caught in the chain of the zombie's weapon. The zombie pulled the chain and sent Wai Shen flying into the boiling cooking pot. Wai Shen winched because the content of the pot was very hot. The zombie then pushed him inside the pot and closed the lid. The zombie also set the fire ablaze. Seeing this, Chen Jingxi was petrified. She could not believe Wai Shen died just to save her. She was on the verge of crying when Wai Shen tapped her shoulder from behind. He had regenerated because of the rebirth system. 200x points were deducted. The special skill that he gained as a reward was Zombie Controller. It allowed the trainer to domesticate dead bodies and immortal creatures. Chen Jingxi felt relieved to see Wai Shen alive. Wai Shen then lunged forward toward the zombie. He asked for Chen Jingxi's help to distract the zombie's attention. Chen Jingxi did not understand what to do to distract the zombie. Wai Shen encouraged her that she could absolutely do anything using her brilliant brain. Wai Shen grabbed the zombie by the neck and activated his skill of zombie control. Chen Jingxi remembered that the zombie was crazy about human flesh, so she decided to lure him by showing off her body. She was successful in doing so. 
the zombie became distracted and rushed at Chen Jingxi. Using that opportunity, Wai Shen successfully demonstrated the zombie. It gave him additional 1000 X points and upgraded his level to 3. No, Wai Shen could totally control the zombie at his will. He told the zombie to give a good cute smile to Chen Jingxi, but the smile was utterly disgusting. Chen Jingxi became creeped out. Chen Jingxi then asked Wai Shen to explain how he could survive his death from the cooking pot and the mystery behind his controlling ability of the zombie. Wai Shen looked at Chen Jingxi and almost had a nosebleed. She was practically half naked. Wai Shen told Chen Jingxi that he would explain everything but first, she should cover herself and offered her clothes. Chen Jingxi became embarrassed and explained that she had stripped just to help Wai Shen, and it had nothing like a weird hobby of hers. Wai Shen gave a neutral look and said nothing. Chen Jingxi diverted the question and told Wai Shen to explain. Wai Shen then started explaining that they both were in a game and he was just a lucky player. He also implied that he had previously played a similar game like this, and about the stuff like controlling zombies and rebirth. These were rewards he gained from doing missions. Chen Jingxi could not understand a single thing Wai Shen explained, so planned to ignore his abnormal ability. Then they rode a cart and instructed the zombie to transport them. They also took the supplies that they had collected with them. The zombie took them out of the school building in a flash. Without the zombie's help, they would have a really hard time coming out with all those supplies. So, Wai Shen thanked the zombie for its help because, because of him, they had saved a lot of time. The zombie then gave Wai Shen a knife as a gift. It was a butcher knife with a level of D this knife could hash any meat to dust. Wai Shen assured the zombie that he would make the best use of the knife. Then they bade farewell. Wai Shen told the zombie to eat more zombies, not humans. Chen Jingxi became disgusted with their conversation and dragged Wai Shen inside the gymnasium. Wai Shen then distributed the supplies and food accordingly. He told everyone that it would be enough for them to survive till 72 hours were over, so they should use them carefully. He also warned them that if he found anyone cheating or stealing others' supplies, he would take severe action. Wai Shen then handed over Hon's portion to Lu Zhu and asked him to give them to her. Lu Zhu announced that they had broken up and that Wai Shen was after all the best boyfriend for Hon. Wai Shen then approached Hon and gave her the supplies. Hon was touched by Wai Shen's generosity. She asked him if he had forgiven her for all her wrongdoings, to which Wai Shen replied positively. He further added that he was no longer bothered by Hon's betrayal because he had someone more precious to take care of. Hon followed Wai Shen's gaze and found him looking at Chen Jingxi. She became jealous and became determined to not let Wai Shen forget about her. Later that night, everyone was sleeping and 58 hours remained. A hand of Chen Jingxi landed on Wai Shen's face, which woke him up. He then went to the washroom to lighten up his nature call. Wai Shen was rinsing his hands on the sink when he noticed Hon in the mirror. She was practically in her underwear and nothing else. She had come to seduce Wai Shen. She started unbuttoning her bra and told Wai Shen a very good evening. Jin Hon came close to Wai Shen. Wai Shen was astonished to see Hon behave like that. She seductively asked Wai Shen if she was pretty or not. Wai Shen gave an honest answer that he had found her pretty, which was why he had given so much effort to flirt with her. Hon thought that Wai Shen was still interested in her, so she started acting like a cute girl. She told Wai Shen that she loved him very much but Wai Shen was very cowardly in the past so she had to look for other men because she only liked strong men. Hearing this, Wai Shen understood that Hon had only come to him because of her advantage. Without him, she would not be able to survive, so she had come to leech on him. Apparently, Wai Shen had no soft corner for Hon, so he pretended to have an interest in her and tied her hands. Hon thought that Wai Shen had finally given in to her temptation and did not hesitate with Wai Shen's actions. But Wai Shen had other thoughts. He took duct tape and taped her mouth. Hon became shocked and started to struggle to get free, but Wai Shen had tied her very strongly. She had no way of freeing herself. Wai Shen then told Hon that he already had his glamorous teacher and got a lovely police officer to accompany him. So Hon was only daydreaming about her value to him. Seeing Hon terrified, Wai Shen reassured her that she had nothing to be afraid of because no zombie could enter that place. But Hon was signaling behind Wai Shen. Wai Shen looked behind him and his teacher jumped at him. Though she was saved and did not turn into a zombie, the zombie virus somehow affected her brain and increased her physical ability. Wai Shen thought about using the mind control ability for zombies on her, but she was too rigid to be controlled. He had to calm her down first to perform the skill. She had become addicted to Wai Shen's blood, so Wai Shen let her suck his blood, but the only thought on his mind was controlling her before she sucked all the blood out of him. He somehow managed to domesticate his teacher but by that time, all of his energy had left his body. 
The next day, Chen Jingxi woke up from her sleep and almost shot Wai Shen because he was looking as dead as a zombie. She thought that he had turned into a zombie, but Wai Shen quickly became normal again by preparing himself. Chen Jingxi noticed Wai Shen's teacher at his side. She asked Wai Shen about her condition. Wai Shen's teacher's name was Wu Yang Zai. She had become a half zombie. Wai Shen told Chen Jingxi that Yang Zai had become a bit wild and dangerous, but there was nothing to be afraid of because he had used his zombie controller ability on her. As Yang Zai's physical ability had become that of a zombie, she would be very useful to them, just like a right arm. Wai Shen then used his points to purchase clothes for Yang Zai, as her clothes were all ripped. He chose an extremely seductive looking outfit for Yang Zai. Seeing this, Chen Jingxi called Wai Shen a pervert. Every student of Yang Zai became mesmerized to see her in such a revealing outfit. They could not believe their teacher was so alluring. Wai Shen commented that regardless of the zombie virus inside Yang Zai's body, she had totally returned to her previous self and her physical strength had also strengthened. Yang Zai had practically become Wai Shen's pet. He could train her like a dog. Everyone was so surprised to see that. But Hon did not find it appealing. A guy rushed to Wai Shen and told him that there were tons of zombies outside the gymnasium. Wai Shen went to check the outside through the glass window of the gymnasium. Zombies were lurking around the gymnasium entrance. Chen Jingxi asked for the reason for their wandering here and there around the entrance to Wai Shen. Wai Shen replied that though the zombies did not have any awareness, they were being controlled. So, there was a high chance that they Wao Six be attacked. Wai Shen rushed to others and informed them that the zombies might attack within the next few minutes. Everyone became terrified. Lu Zhu commented that Wai Shen was strong, so he could kill all the zombies and save them. Wai Shen corrected Lu Zhu by saying that it would be impossible for him to kill all the zombies alone. So, he asked for their cooperation to fight the zombies. Everyone started to freak out. They started saying that if they were accidentally bitten, they would completely turn into a zombie which would end their lives. Wai Shen told them that the bottle he was holding contained a kind of liquid that had helped the teacher fight against the zombie virus, so it would be okay if they drink that from time to time. Moreover, they would certainly be taught basic skills in battling and killing low-level zombies, so they would be totally fine. Chen Jingxi understood at a glance that it was Wai Shen's blood. She understood the reason why he looked so pale in the morning. Apparently, the amount he was handing over was not small. Wai Shen also provoked them by saying if they were not real men they could back away from the fight because he would not force anyone to fight. But they had to accept in front of everyone that they were not man enough to fight. It was known that no man would tolerate insults to their ego. Wai Shen also told them all they knew was hiding behind someone's back when in danger. Those people became very agitated and announced that they would fight with Wai Shen. Chen Jingxi was shocked to see how everyone's spirit got lifted just by a few provocative words from Wai Shen. But some of the men would naturally be cowardly. Among them, one was Lu Xu. He admitted in front of everyone that he was not man enough to fight. Wai Shen reassured him that it was not a problem at all and that they would protect him and the girls from the zombies. Others followed Wai Shen to prepare to fight the zombies. Wai Shen used 200 points to buy some weaponaries for the men to train. Those were the cheapest weapons he could find. He told everyone that he would teach them some basic moves of martial art which they could use to easily kill low-level zombies. As their time was short such as four hours, they had to train and become almost trained quickly. He showed them a technique called Fangdao Yongxi Kua Sen Ba De Apian. From this technique, using three or four moves would be enough for them to deal with the zombies. The technique was not so easy, but those who had even a little base could progress a lot. Wai Shen thought himself to be an idiot because he threw them into martial training without even knowing if they had joined normal PE classes previously. Chen Jingxi came to Wai Shen and told him to teach the technique to her because she found the technique to be powerful. Wai Shen told Chen Jingxi that she needed not to learn it because she was the only one among them who had a gun. Chen Jingxi corrected Wai Shen that she had run out of billets, so she had no other choice but to learn the technique. Wai Shen then surprised Chen Jingxi by showing the stack of reservoir bullets he had collected for her. Chen Jingxi was dumbfounded and asked Wai Shen how he found them. Wai Shen replied that it was not necessary for her to know. She just needed to know that Wai Shen had tons stacked for her. One point was equivalent to 10 bullets. Chen Jingxi could use those 500 bullets generously. Chen Jingxi hardly ever had that many bullets, so she decided to practice her shooting skills. Wai Shen took the opportunity and approached Chen Jingxi. He tried to correct her posture but his main reason for helping her was to flirt with her. Chen Jingxi understood his reason and pushed him away. Another guy shouted at Wai Shen that he was supposed to help them learn the technique. Wai Shen then went to them to show them another move. Wai Shen found the final result not so bad. 
according to him, those men were almost ready to fight. The system notified them that the zombie wave was coming and instructed them to be prepared. Why Shen and others prepared to fight. The zombies burst open the gate and entered the gymnasium to kill them all. But everyone became terrified because the zombie they were facing was their homeroom teacher. Their legs started to shake. Wai Shen remembered that the homeroom teacher had always been strict with his students which resulted in instinctive fear among them. Wai Shen encouraged everyone to not be afraid because the teacher had turned out to be a zombie and they could fight him using the techniques he had taught them. The guy tried to attack the homeroom teacher, but he was too strong. The result was he sent that guy flying to the wall. Then the homeroom zombie started menacing all sorts of cursed words to those people to demotivate them because, after all, they were nothing but students. They started to lose all the spirits that they had previously. Right then, young Zai rushed forward and gave the homeroom zombie a hard punch in the face. She dared him not to demotivate her students like that. Wai Shen became delighted that his teacher had regained consciousness. Yang Zai became embarrassed to see her outfit. By then, the homeroom zombie had recovered the punch and aimed for Yang Zai. Wai Shen blocked the homeroom teacher's attack using his weapon, but his weapon got stuck. He was unable to retrieve it. What could be expected from a cheap weapon anyway? Wai Shen then looked at Anag Zai and shouted that her body had strengthened because of the zombie virus, so she should join the battle to help him. But Yang Zai could not understand a word Wai Shen was saying. Wai Shen became irritated. He could not understand what to do because it was very unusual for C-level zombies to appear in the first game. On top of that, the regain of Ying Zai's consciousness had led to the loss of battling instincts. She was nothing but a useless person right now. The homeroom teacher zombie was about to attack Wai Shen when Chen Jing she shot the zombie in the head, but that had no effect on the zombie. The homeroom zombie became more aggressive and lunged forward to attack Yang Zai. Wai Shen jumped forward and saved Yang Zai. Wai Shen became tense because the homeroom teacher was much stronger than he thought. He had to turn the homeroom teacher into a half-zombie to save others. Then he looked at Yang Zai, and she gave him an innocent look. Wai Shen pointed at Yang Zai and called her a stupid airhead. There was a reason why Shen was trying to provoke Yang Zai. Yang Zai's body would start to transform into a zombie if she went through a strong emotional reaction. Likewise, she became quite angry and was going into half-zombie mode. Wai Shen continued to provoke her by saying that despite being an old person, she still wore underwear with cartoon figures. He also added how she was still single and spent her Valentine's days alone. The homeroom teacher interrupted their conversation by rushing to them to attack. Yang Zai was already pissed and the interruption pissed her off even more. She kicked the homeroom teacher and told him to go to hell. This strength was what Wai Shen was aiming to retrieve from Yang Zai. Wai Shen took his weapon from the ground and told Yang Zai that he just needed that strength to defeat the homeroom teacher and kill the zombies with him. But Yang Zai was very triggered. She tried to kick Wai Shen at his balls but Wai Shen somehow managed to dodge them. He apologized to Yang Zai that he was sorry for triggering her. Wai Shen told Yang Zai to kill the zombies first and then do anything to him. Chen Jingxi, on the other hand, commented that Wai Shen deserved to be kicked in the balls because he dared to say such offending words to a woman. Yang Zai and Wai Shen together took down low-leveled zombies easily. Wai Shen realized that the homeroom teacher was more likely to be defeated if he continued to collaborate with Yang Zai. The homeroom teacher summoned his minions. Wai Shen was shocked because he forgot about those minions of the homeroom teacher. Wai Shen could not ask for help from his classmates also because they were already drained by the cursed words the homeroom teacher had created in their heads. Wai Shen tried to call them out of their depressed self but it was no use. They were very emerged in their thoughts. Wai Shen had no other choice but to apply the vulgar method. He stripped Yang Zai from her underwear and showed it to his classmates. He told them the underwear would belong to the person who would kill the most zombies. They instantly became motivated again. When someone said boys were dogs, they did not say it wrong. They were so motivated that they decided to fight till their blood ran out. They started competing by killing zombies to see who killed the most zombies. Chen Jingxi commented that all the boys in this class were perverts. Wai Shen announced that Chen Jingxi would also give her underwear as a reward. But that was not true. He said that to tease Chen Jingxi. Yang Zai and Wai Shen teamed up to kill the homeroom teacher. Yang Zai knee butted the homeroom teacher's face, and Wai Shen used his martial arts techniques to attack the homeroom teacher. With that, the homeroom teacher was killed and the notification showed that the boss of that dungeon was killed. Everyone had upgraded a level according to their efforts. The penguin showed up again and congratulated everyone for surviving. He exclaimed that their surviving members were comparatively more than other dungeons, which was quite impressive. A guy was furious and tried to attack the penguin, but the penguin was made of a hologram. 
The penguin commented that there was no use in using force because he was someone from a higher authority, and they could not touch him. The penguin announced that their second game would begin shortly until then, they should enjoy the safe hour. The penguin disappeared. The guy who attacked the penguin was very furious. He shouted that the penguin was not allowed to go and demanded to know his sister's whereabouts. But the penguin was long gone and he could not get his answers. Wai Shen approached that guy and tried to calm him down. Wai Shen told that guy that there was no benefit in opposing the penguin. The guy was furious and attacked Wai Shen. He asked Wai Shen about his knowledge of this system, about this place, and how he knew so much about this game. Others started to suspect Wai Shen. They started whispering that Wai Shen might have another motive of his own. Wai Shen smirked and told that guy that there were tons of things that they did not know about. He even gave their situation as an example. Everyone called down a little. Wai Shen also added that the reason behind his knowledge was that he had faced these sorts of situations before as well. Wai Shen then accused them of their bad behavior because he was the one who had saved their lives. If it was not for Wai Shen, they would have become zombies a long time ago. Hearing this, everyone felt guilty for their behavior. Then the guy who had an outburst started crying because he could not take the idea that his family had also met with this accident. Wai Shen then advised them that they should think about sustaining their lives. The game might look dangerous but they had the probability to survive. If they could survive, they would become stronger than ever. He promised them that he would save them even if they did not believe him. Chen Jing she felt proud of Wai Shen. She realized that Wai Shen looked really handsome when acted seriously like that. But Wai Shen's seriousness only lasted for a minute. He then took out the prize which was Yang Zai's underwear to give to the winner of the contest they had set as their motivation. The person who had killed the most zombies certainly had more exp, so it would not be hard to decide the winner. Yang Zai became angry and pinned Wai Shen down on the ground using her strength and strength. Chen Jing she looked disappointed in Wai Shen because just when she thought he was handsome, he had to do something absurd. The first mission had been completed, so the gymnasium had become the safe zone for the people. Wai Shen already knew about this because this was exactly what happened in his previous life. The place where the mission was completed would become the safe zone and the person with the highest level would automatically be selected as the safe zone's manager. So, they should offer him a proper plan to set up. Chen Jing she questioned what was the meaning of the safe zone. She was confused because as the mission was completed, they all should be safe now, so there would not be a need for a safe zone. Wai Shen explained that most areas of this world were still dangerous, and also there were very few safe zones available for people to settle in. The safe zone was a protected place where obnoxious creatures other than humans were not able to enter. These places could be rewarded as short breaks for players during battles. A guy noticed that the zombies were unable to enter the barrier. He asked if they had to live the rest of their lives there to protect themselves. Another guy answered that it was not possible because soon they would run out of resources, which meant a lack of food and water. They would die eventually without the resources. Wai Shen also added his insights. He told them that the shield that was protecting them would also disappear permanently if their defense did not work. This would give the zombies freedom to attack and lack of protection for the players. But Wai Shen promised them that he would help them in building a very strong safe zone, so they needed not to worry. Seeing his arrogance, others wanted to punch him in the face but could not because he was their only source of survival. Chen Jing she commented that although he was nothing but an annoying person, they had no other choice but to obey him. Wai Shen approached Chen Jingxi and used his authority to command his first order to Chen Jingxi. He asked her to come to his room every night to serve him as a king. Chen Jingxi became pissed and threw him onto the ground like a sack of potatoes. After a few days, a mother was running away from the zombies with her daughter. The mother told her daughter, Xiao Ling, to run fast but Xiao Ling was too exhausted to run any faster. She came across a dead end. She thought that it was the end of her and her daughter. She hugged her daughter and screamed for help when the zombies rushed to attack her. Wai Shen was sitting over the wall and watching all this. He made his entry at the right time and killed those zombies. He commented that one should not be afraid when one came across a problem. Instead, one should fight them with a bright smile on their face. After killing the zombies, Wai Shen approached the mother and daughter. The daughter accused Wai Shen of being an idiot. Her mother stopped her from talking and thanked Wai Shen for his help and apologized for her daughter's behavior. Wai Shen welcomed them and offered to take them to a safe place. Xiao Ling confronted Wai Shen by implying that everywhere she saw was full of zombies, so it was not possible for a safe place to exist. Wai Shen assured the girl that the safe place was very large and comfortable, and cupped her face, but Xiao Ling was quite violent. 
She bit on Wai Shen's hand because he had touched her. Wai screamed in pain and asked Xiao Ling if she was a dog or something. Xiao Ling's mother pulled her away from Wai Shen and apologized for that. She stated that Xiao Ling was only scared, which was why she was behaving like that. But Xiao Ling commented that it was not true and that the reason behind her behavior was that she found Wai Shen a little weird. Xiao Ling even called Wai Shen an uncle. This triggered Wai Shen. Wai Shen asked for the reason for being called uncle because he knew he did not look that old. But there was no changing a child's mind. It was as hard as growing plants on a rock. Xiao Ling's mother asked Wai Shen if the place that he just mentioned really existed. Wai Shen then took them with him to a safe place. Chen Jingxi was the security officer of that place now. She asked Wai Shen if he had picked up the lucky people again. The survivors of the zombie attacks were considered lucky people. Wai Shen introduced Chen Jingxi to his invited guests. Xiao Ling's mother also introduced herself as Zhuang Xiao Wan and her daughter as Zhuang Xiao Ling. Chen Jingxi welcomed them into the safe zone and assured them that they need not worry about anything for the time they would stay there. Chen Jingxi also told Xiao Wan that, though Wai Shen did appear to be an unreliable and weird person, he was originally quite reliable. Though it was praise, Wai Shen somehow felt offended because it sounded more like an insult, but he was quick to recover it. He then asked Xiao Wan and Xiao Ling to follow him so that he could prepare proper accommodations for them. He gave them a room and bed to sleep in. Xiao Wan put her daughter to sleep and went to Wai Shen's room. Wai Shen was sitting on the couch. He noticed Xiao Wan coming and told her to rest well even though she seemed quite strenuous. Xiao Wan then thanked Wai Shen for his generosity. She told Wai Shen that if he had not helped them, they would have become food to zombies and would have also become a zombie. Wai Shen told her that it was alright and replied that he had not brought them here without his benefits. Xiao Wan thought that Wai Shen had brought her to fulfill his sexual need as repayment, so she started stripping off her dress. She was almost stripped naked and was in her underwear when Wai Shen stopped her and told her that he did not bring her there for that reason. Xiao Wan became embarrassed for reading too much into the room. She told Wai Shen that she was very ashamed and commented that Wai Shen would definitely not want anything to do with an old lady like her. Wai Shen corrected her and told her she did not look very old and definitely did not look anything like a mother who had a daughter. Xiao Wan found some self-confidence back and those people who were having a hard time also regained their confidence. Then, Wai Shen left the room and instructed Wai Shen to rest properly. After Wai Shen left, Xiao Wan looked at the mirror and admired her face. She found herself not so old, she had a child also. Wai Shen refused Xiao Wan because of his dignity, not because she did not look attractive. She was very hot and attractive, but because he wanted to preserve his self-worth. But he was dying with regrets because a beautiful girl like Xiao Wan willingly wanted to do that with Wai Shen. The next day, in an empty schoolyard, Wai Shen decided to use his 100 points to purchase a basic bathroom contractions diagram to confirm its building. Building a basic bathroom cost 100 bricks and 100 rocks. After confirming the raw materials, the bathroom was constructed. The function of the bathroom was that it recovered a player's physical health in a small range. Chen Jingxi stated that it was very unscientific because it was incongruous to construct infrastructure there. Wai Shen told Chen Jingxi that they were in a game and anything was possible in the game. He also added a comment that women like Chen Jingxi would love to keep themselves clean. Wai Shen's narcissistic behavior kicked in and tried to guilt trip Chen Jingxi by mentioning that he had spent lots of resources on building the bathroom, so she should be grateful to him. Chen Jingxi countered that his only purpose to build such a thing only for women proved his ulterior motive. She tried to guess his motive and came up with an idea. She asked Wai Shen if his intention was to watch them shower sneakily. Wai Shen then provoked Chen Jingxi by telling that he had no interest in skinny bodies. Chen Jingxi was definitely not skinny, so she got triggered and pointed her gun at Wai Shen. Then she asked him if she heard right about the words he just said. Wai Shen then changed the topic and started talking about his exercise. Xiao Ling smelled her body and said that she wanted to shower because she had not showered for quite a few days. Wai Shen then took the opportunity and told the girl to feel free to use the bathroom. But as being weird, Wai Shen had creeped out the little girl and she went running to her mother. She started telling Xiao Wen that Wai Shen was weird and that she wanted to leave from here. Xiao Wen knew this was the safest place to stay, so she consoled her daughter and made her understand. She then took Xiao Ling to shower with her. Every female went to shower and started comparing their bodies with each other. Chen Jingxi complimented Xiao Wan for having such a voluptuous body. Xiao Wan also commented that Chen Jingxi's body was also very good and started teasing her by touching her chests. On the other side, horny men were peeking at the girls from a small hole in the wall that separated the girls' and boys' shower rooms. Wai Shen came and caught them. 
He lectured them on moral behavior and told them not to do that ever again. But Wai Shen himself was not moral at all. After the boys left from there to shower, Wai Shen himself peeked from the hole to see the girls because he was the most perverted among the boys. But Chen Jingxi had already found the hole and was standing in front of it. Just when Wai Shen peeked from the hole, Chen Jingxi stabbed his eye with his finger from the hole because he dared to do such a nasty thing. Wai Shen cried out loud and almost thought that he had gone blind. Wai Shen started showering with an eye bruise. He mumbled to himself that Chen Jingxi was just as strong as he remembered her in the past. He was washing himself using soap. Suddenly, the soap fell to the ground and some guys appeared in his shower room from nowhere. Every one of them looked at him like a hungry hyena. Those boys surrounded Wai Shen. The sleek soap treated Wai Shen's health a little as it was the bathroom's function. Then a notification popped up that an unlimited practice round one was going to start. All alive players would be picked up at a random place and would receive a mission. If the player could finish the mission, they would obtain a great reward. But if the player failed the mission, they would die and be cancelled from the game forever. Wai Shen understood that those guys who came from nowhere were randomly sent here by the system to kill him. But Wai Shen had defeated them instead. So they got cancelled from the game forever. Wai Shen then lifted the curtain of the shower and came out of the shower. But as the system mentioned, he was taken to a random place by it for his mission. The naked him came across a naked Xiao Wan and Xiao Ling in a jungle. Xiao Wan and Xiao Ling were also teleported there out of nowhere when they were showering, so they were also naked. Both parties screamed looking at each other. Wai Shen almost had a nosebleed because of the sight he was witnessing. Xiao Ling shouted at Wai Shen to look away and cursed him by calling him a son of a bitch. Wai Shen looked around and immediately swapped some clothes from the system. Wai Shen was grateful that the system was there or he would have ended up in a big mess. Xiao Ling dressed up and started questioning Wai Shen about the reason why they were taken there all of a sudden when they were showering. Right then, an arrow flew at Wai Shen from somewhere. Wai Shen dodged it easily. He called out for the culprit to come out. Xiao Wan became alert and guarded Xiao Ling. Some tribe people came out from the jungle and surrounded them. The tribe member ordered them to follow him and threatened that if they did not follow him then they would die. Wai Shen became triggered and started flexing his arm for a fight. Wai Shen covered Xiao Wan and Xiao Ling and told those tribe members to come after him and leave them alone. But the mountainous had another plan. They had nothing to do with boys, but they did need girls. So, the person who was giving all the commands in the tribe commanded to kill Wai Shen and take Xiao Wan and Xiao Ling with them. All the tribe members pointed their arrows at Wai Shen. Wai Shen knew he would not be able to kill all of them as well as save Xiao Wan and Xiao Ling. So, he raised his hands in surrender and told the commanding person that he would follow him. Xiao Ling was first impressed to see Wai Shen protect them, but when he surrendered, Xiao Ling became pissed and called Wai Shen a coward. Those people tied Wai Shen's, Xiao Ling's, and Xiao Wan's hands tightly. They started taking them toward their village. Xiao Wan asked Wai Shen if he had some kind of plan, or else they all would die. Wai Shen assured Xiao Wan that they would absolutely find a way out and would save them. Xiao Ling started badmouthing Wai Shen by calling him a coward. She also emphasized that she could see the bad qualities written on those tribe members' faces. She was sure that they were putting an end to their lives right there. Wai Shen loved to tease people. He started scaring little Xiao Ling by telling her that the tribe members might not have seen such a little cute girl like her, so there was a high chance that they would eat her first. Xiao Ling became scared and started complaining to her mother. Xian Wan was also having fun and told Wai Shen not to make fun of Xiao Ling. They reached the Caterpillar village which was those tribe members' village. The chief of the village explained that this village was known as the Caterpillar village because they believed that they were protected by the Great Caterpillar. That was why they respected the Caterpillar as their god. To express their gratitude to their god equal Caterpillar, they made a ritual of performing a sacrifice ceremony annually. In the ceremony, they used beautiful ladies as sacrifices. The tribe chief then commanded his tribe members to capture the lady and tie her up to throw in the hole as a sacrifice. Xiao Ling thought that they were talking about her. She became scared and shouted for her mother. But the tribe members were aiming for her mother from the very start. They tied her up despite her protest and slowly lowered her into the hole. Xiao Ling dashed toward her mother to save her but tripped halfway on her way. Xiao Ling started crying and asked why the sacrifice had to be her mother. Wai Shen replied that her mother was very seductive and beautiful. She even had a body that was finger-licking good. Wai Shen continued that if he were a god, he would never have chosen a stick like Xiao Ling. Xiao Ling became offended and bit Wai Shen's arm. But Xiao Ling wanted to save her mother. So, Wai Shen suggested to Xiao Ling that she should become close to him and act accordingly so that they could save Xiao Wan 
and leave that place. The chief was performing some kind of mantra when Wai Shen interrupted him in the middle of it. He started telling that serving alive people as sacrifices seemed to be too cruel, and asked if they had lost their humanity. The chief replied that becoming a sacrifice to the great caterpillar was a pleasure, and that there was nothing crueler about it. Hearing this answer, Wai Shen killed the tribe chief in the hole and told him to go first to achieve that pleasure of his. 